Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, we're going to talk about building the ultimate trauma kit. I'm going to take you step by step. I'm going to show you where I would probably invest a little bit more money in my kit versus where if you wanted to, you can might save a little money over here. So hopefully this video is going to help you if you're looking at building your own trauma kit. The first item we're going to take a look at here is a tourniquet. I think you need at least one good tourniquet. Probably if we're talking about building the ultimate trauma kit, I think you need two tourniquets. Find a tourniquet that you like and stick with it, okay? It's like a woman. Find you a good woman to stick with her. Same thing with a tourniquet. If you like the cat, stick with the cat. If you like the soft tea, stick with soft tea. So for me, like my kits, I'm gonna put like maybe two cats in there. You could put two soft teas in there. The new everyday tourniquets in there, you could put that. If you wanted to run it's two Sam X teas, you could do that. Or if you want to run a combo, so you want a cat and a SWAT tee. That's fine. This thing has multiple uses. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I think you should put two tourniquets in your kit because not all the time, but sometimes we do see, especially with leg uh, issues, we need two tourniquets to compress them to get the bleeding completely stopped with a leg injury. So the possibility of needing two tourniquets is there. So have two. The next thing I want to take a look at here is gauze. You're going to need plenty of gauze in this kit. And we can go from a wide range of 5x9's roll gauze with no hemostatic agents all the way over here to hemostatic agents such as combat gauze and quick clot. Now there again, if you're on a budget, let's stay on this side. Let's stay on just regular gauze that has no hemostatic agents. But if you've got the budget or no money is an option for you, then combat gauze is a better choice over here. So roll gauze. This is non-hemostatic agent, just simple roll gauze. You can pick this up by the box. Super cheap. Pack a couple of these in your kit and you're good to go. Compressed gauze, like this uh, from H&H &H right here, is no hemostatic. You're talking like five bucks for this package here. It's compressed, doesn't take up a lot of space in your kit, and it moves from there. We talked about the 5 by 9s just for that moderate to moderate bleeding is in there as well. But then we can start getting the hemostatic agents. So this EMS roll gauze is the same material that's in combat gauze here. So this is four yards, this is four feet. This is a lot cheaper than this, but you're getting less gauze. If you wanted to stack combat gauze and compressed gauze here in your kit, nothing wrong with that. Also, Celox Rapid is a choice here uh, for hemostatic agent here. So it just kind of comes down to personal preference on which one you like better. Some people like combat gauze, some like Celox better, but this is more expensive than this right here. So if you're on a budget, go stick more towards the $5 gauze. If you're over here, these are like 45. So a little bit more money, especially if you start talking putting multiple packs of combat gauze in your kit. This kit's gonna get super expensive fast. And then with pressure bandages, it's wide open on your preference, your choice there. You could go from an emergency bandage like this, this is not commonly known as Israeli, to a NAR four inch. They make a four inch in this one as well. You've got a flat four inch you could do. The Elias comes in a four and six inch here. You could also just go a very simple elastic wrap, ace bandage like this one right here. For me, if I was looking at building a trauma kit, typically, honestly, in my eye fact, I only keep one pressure bandage in there. If you want to add two, because one is none, two is one, I get it. But at least have one of these in there. If you wanted, had the space, put two. So that covers massive bleeding. We have tourniquets, we have galls, we have wraps. So anything that is squirting blood, major bleeding, we can take care of with this kit so far. Now thinking about airways, this comes down to training. It's not really a budget thing. These are like five, six bucks a piece. These are MPAs. Goes into the nose to hold the tongue off the back of the throat. This is not really a budget item. This is about training. If you are trained in how to use this, no big deal. You've got an MPA here. It's a number 28. Fits most adults. This is a pre-lube one here, which is nice, beneficial. It's one less packaging you have to carry in there because this one you can put lube with it. This one you don't need lube, so to me, like this is about safe, uh, saving space right here. So a pre-lubed MPA drop in there. But honestly, it comes down to training. If you're not trained on how to use this, then if someone's airways occluded, and we've done a tourniquet, we've done wound packing, and they're unconscious, they're snoring, all you gotta do is put them in the recovery position. Lay them on their side. This will take the tongue off the back of the throat, and we're clear. MPAs come in many sizes. You're talking about from down to 22 up to like 32 size. So wide ranges of from child, infant, adult, uh, large adult. So many sizes there. 
but typically a 28 will fit most adults and this really comes down to training. So now that we have massive bleeding taken care of, we have airway taken care of, let's look at respiratory. So typically we're gonna see chest seals. Anything from neck to abdominal area, we put a chest seal on. There's plenty of chest seals on the market there. The two that I probably wanna look at would be the Halo chest seal and the Hyphen chest seal. These are fairly new to the market, the Halo IFAC. Usually the Halo is coming in a big packaging, so I really like the Halo IFAC because it comes in similar packaging to the Hyphens here. So either one of these. They also make compact Hyphens if you're looking for size. But I think one pack of these will be just fine, typically for your trauma kit. So this comes in a two pack here, and this is a two pack here for front and back. So we can look, make sure we're not having anything going on the back side as well. But I think one pack of chest seals is good for you. So again, just kind of pick and choose which one you'd like to go with. Those packs of chest seals can get a little expensive. They're 15, 20 bucks a piece. If you're on a budget, look for some petroleum galls. Now we're not actually gonna use the galls here, but the inside of this packaging is sticky. So you could open this up, stick it onto the wound, either hold it on with a gloved hand or tape it on your sides, however you were taught. Uh, but this is a, just a few dollars here where we can put this on, tape it up, and it works. A plastic bag will work just fine, even like out of this here. We can make that work as a chest seal. So if you're on a budget here, there's some places you can save money on this particular section, whether you want to use a commercial grade or improvised chest seals. Then while we're on breathing, don't want to say have to have a pocket mask in there, but some people I've always asked about it. So if someone's not breathing well, that are unconscious, breathing you know, four to six times a minute, not very deep breaths, we may have to kind of assist them with their breathing. So we have a few options here we can look at. So you could always look at like a pocket shield, something like this. This is just a plastic piece that goes over the patient's face, one-way valve. This is a pocket mask. It has the actual shield that kind of seals. I like these a lot better because vomit, puke, and stuff like that's not come through as well. So I like that. You can look at a bad valve mask. There again, if you have training, like if you have training in these, these are easy to throw in there. If you don't, I probably wouldn't do it. If you have a little more advanced training on how to use a bag valve mask, then that's something you can throw in there. You've got an adult BVM mask here. If size, because our kid's getting fairly big all of a sudden, if size, you do like a pocket BVM here. Uh, this is gonna be used so we don't have to get our face down there. We can just make a seal, squeeze the bag every six to eight seconds, just to look at chest rise. So something like this, you can throw in your kit. There again, you're gonna to wanna to have some training in how to use these before you put them in your kit. All right, so we have massive bleeding covered, we have airway covered, we have respiratory coming in. So now we have heat loss. This is a big thing. Hypothermia will kill our trauma patients super easy. And it definitely is easier to prevent hypothermia than it is to fix it in the field. So a couple of things we can look at here is the Mylar space blankets. You could go like a blizzard blanket, which has multiple layers, super big cover head to toe, or even this little cheap blanket here, a couple bucks works well, but we gotta try to prevent hypothermia. We need to prevent hypothermia, so moving our patient from a cold environment to a warm environment is very crucial. The other thing you can look at here is get some hot packs. You're gonna need a few of these because we can pop these and put them in like the axillary area, especially there's major vessels. So like in the groin with femoral arteries are coming through, pop these, put them on our patient, pop these, put them on the armpit, things like that. You can have a few of these in your kit to generate some heat, which will be huge life-saving for your trauma patients. So a few more items here, kind of a catch-all is everything else I would look at putting into this ultimate first aid kit. No particular order here. You're gonna need multiple pair of gloves in this kit. We have gotten away from the black gloves, the super tactical looking gloves, to a brighter color. That way we can see blood on the gloves. If you have black gloves, it, blood is difficult to see on there. So getting a brighter color is better. So when you're doing your sweep, trying to find what's wrong with the patient, you can see blood on your gloves. I like having tape in my kit, whether you're using some duct tape, gecko tape, or just some regular cloth medical tape here. Even some flat duct tape works well. This is come in handy so many times. Just having some tape in your kit is definitely beneficial. I like having the chem lights in there to kind of break open so you can see what you're doing, especially after dark or dark places like that. You can pop these, they're super cheap. Hang them up, hang them into a tree, hang them into a side of a car, lay them on the ground. Kind of helps you see. That way if you don't have a flashlight on you, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Plus you can work hands-free. 
I like having a Sharpie in my kit to write things down. Maybe I'm writing down phone numbers for the patient. Maybe I'm writing down who I need to contact, if they're allergic to anything, the time I put the tourniquet on. So plenty of reasons why to carry a Sharpie in there. Uh, this is a cheap ad as well. Scissors, you gotta be able to expose your injuries here. So whether you run just the cheap EMS scissors, these are like five bucks a piece, or you wanna get a nicer pair like the X shears, it's up to you and your budget. Uh, I think these work well for multiple uses. For most people, these are gonna work just fine. We talked about having the gloves in there. Hand sanitizer, so you can look at too. You may get blood in some places that you, you know, up on your arms, arms here, above the gloves. So be able to take the gloves off, use some hand sanitizer until, until you can get the warm soapy water. It's gonna help you. So some hand sanitizer in there. And one of the things that I think is over missed a lot is boo-boo type stuff. We have talked about all this major trauma and we're at the gun range and I have a headache and I do not wanna be there. I don't want to be in front of the camera. I don't want to be social. I have a headache. I just have something I'm getting done. Tylenol, perfect. Or you get a scrape and you need a Band-Aid. Or someone has a large reaction. Like, think about those little boo-boo type items that you may need a Band-Aid for. Uh, like in our particular kit, this boo-boo kit right here is, you know, uh, antiseptic wipes. It's got bite and sting pads. So all those little minor emergencies that could ruin your day at the gun range is right here. So one of the things we have not mentioned so far in this video, we talked about all the components. We haven't mentioned bags. And man, we are wide open from here from a Ziploc bag on a budget to maybe a small kit like one of these VanQuest bags up to a backpack or a first responder bag. You gotta choose that. How big you want your kit? Are you carrying it on you? Are you putting it in a vehicle? All that is gonna determine which bag you wanna put this in. So for me, I would build the kit out and then think about the bag. You may just need a little small bag that can go on your plate carrier, go on your belt, depending on what you're looking for, or you need a large backpack, depending on how many supplies you bought, how many you've kind of accumulated over the years. So build the kit out and then think about the bag that you want to put it in. As you're building this kit, think about, all right, do I want to carry this on me or do I just want to leave it in the truck? Do I want to put it in my range bag? Where do I want this kit to be? And that's going to help you build the size kits you want. So once you have the bag picked out, whichever size you need, whether it's really small or a big giant backpack, then you need to label that kit. So think about like this patch here that says IFAC. It's got a red cross on it. Everybody knows this is a first aid kit, hopefully. Um, look at med labels like this one says IFAC here. Bleeding control, something like that. This says trauma on it. Um, first aid. So think of some way to label this kit so everybody knows it's a trauma kit. So hopefully this video helps you build out the kit that you've kind of got in your head that you want to build. You don't want a pre-made kit, you want to build it yourself. Great, there's no problem with that. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. I would appreciate support at medicalgearoutfitters.com. That is our company. Uh, so take a look at there, take a look at our prices and see if we can help you build your kit there. Remember, you need the right gear and the right training because you never know when you'll be the first responder.